So there's a lot of talk in the church right now about people deconstructing their Christian faith. This is an especially big deal for young people who are leaving the Christian faith at a faster rate than at any other time in Western history. Pew Research shows that while three quarters of American baby boomers still identify as some type of Christian, less than half of millennials do. And in fact, only three out of 10 millennials claim to attend religious services more than twice per month. Besides that, you've probably heard stories in recent years of well-known worship pastors or other Christian leaders deconstructing or even deconverting from the faith altogether. In fact, the chances are you probably know someone who at one point identified as a Christian who has either lost their faith, claimed to have left the faith, or who no longer finds Christianity to be a good fit for them. The Bible actually warns us about this very thing. It tells us why some people will end up losing their faith in Jesus. Remember, Jesus compared faith to a mustard seed. He also compared people whose hearts are humble and meek and ready to receive the gospel to the good soil that a gardener comes along and sows seed into. Those are the people, Jesus said, who continue to hold fast to their faith throughout the remainder of their lives. He also said that the people who lose their faith or who stop believing are like rocky soil that the seed couldn't take deep root in. All these things are why in this video, I'm going to tell you three things that the Bible says you and I can do to steward and grow our faith in Jesus. One of the things people do that causes them to eventually lose their faith in Jesus is to stop resisting their sinful nature. The book of James says that men and women are tempted to sin when they are lured and enticed by sinful desires. The word lured actually means to be drug away. When these desires are not resisted by way of the Holy Spirit, they can eventually lead to sin and death. What does that look like, you say? It looks like people losing their faith in Jesus. The reason this warning is in the Bible is because James wants us to be aware that if we stop resisting our sinful nature, eventually our faith will get dull. That's why we're told in Colossians 3 to make war on our flesh by way of the Spirit. I bet that when you first became a Christian, you were astonished at how aware you were of your sinful nature. Things that you used to do that didn't bother you at all now bothered you a great deal. Am I right? That was a sign of God's Spirit at work within you. And what you want to do is cooperate with it. Don't resist the work of the Holy Spirit to sanctify you. Resist your flesh by way of the Spirit. And don't get lax or ho-hum about sin in your life. If you continue resisting and waging war on your sin nature by way of the Spirit, your faith will grow and mature exponentially, oftentimes in short order. The second thing you can do to steward your faith in Jesus is stop loving the world. What do I mean by that? In the book of 1 John, the apostle describes what he means by the phrase loving the world. He describes it as the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and pride of possessions. If you, like many people, find yourself constantly yearning for more and more stuff, constantly wanting to buy the next fad item, or always needing to upgrade everything in your life. That is one example of loving the world. Maybe for some of you, it's something else, like consuming too much entertainment, or spending hours of your day scrolling aimlessly through social media. 
It could be something else entirely. Maybe some of you are so tired of being single that you're constantly on the prowl and you've forgotten that if God is not the source of your satisfaction in singleness, no spouse is ever going to be able to come along and fill the void that only God can fill. Whatever it is for you, loving the world is a simple thing to grasp. Is there anything in your life that is competing for your devotion to Jesus? Is there anything that you've allowed to be placed on a pedestal equal with or even above the Lord? Are you looking to other things to give you satisfaction and contentment in this life? If you are, those are things you need to alter your relationship with. Not loving the world is a key to growing and stewarding your faith in Jesus. The third thing you can do to steward your faith in Christ is adopt a high view of Scripture. Have you ever heard someone say something like this? Well, you know, the Bible doesn't have to be inerrant in order to be infallible. Or how about this one? The historical narratives in the Bible aren't actually meant to be taken as literal history. Or here's one of my favorites. The book of Isaiah wasn't actually written by a prophet named Isaiah in the 8th century BC. All of these are examples of things that people say when they have a low view of Scripture. When you have a high view of Scripture, like Jesus did, you believe that the Bible is historically reliable when it's conveying historical information. You believe that it does not contradict itself and you believe that it is both inerrant and infallible. To be clear, biblical inerrancy and biblical infallibility are not difficult concepts to grasp. If you believe that scripture is inerrant, you believe that it is without air in its original inspired autographs. If you believe that scripture is infallible, you believe that it holds authority over the Christian life and the Christian church. Why is this so important? Because when someone has a low view of scripture, it makes them a sitting duck. When you start buying into the lies that people who don't like Christianity tell about the Bible because you think it's hip or chic to be a more sophisticated or intellectual Christian, it's only a matter of time before you start disqualifying everything in the Bible that you don't like. And that, my friends, will put you on the express lane toward losing your faith in Jesus. If you don't want to do that, if you want to steward and watch your faith grow until it turns you into a spiritual giant, adopt a high view of scripture and hold fast to it. Those are the three things that you and I can do to steward and grow our faith in Jesus. It is my hope and prayer that you will pursue all three of them in the power of the Holy Spirit. My friends, if you liked this video or got something out of it, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, sharing this video with friends and leaving a comment in the comment section helps us out a ton. Also, if you enjoyed this and you want to expand and get more into this conversation, we recently did a one-hour podcast episode on this very topic, and I'll put the link to that episode right here. Until next time, stay blessed.